would like to kick off the press conference. I really appreciate you all taking the time to join us today. Um, we will send out an official copy of the press release following the um, announcement and also will be available for questions. So today we're here as part of the Restore Greater Newport Task Force. And we are calling on the General Assembly and incoming McKee administration to enact meaningful measures to aid regions, our region's economy. The Restore Greater Newport Task Force is a coalition of private, public, government entities working collectively since March of 2020 to minimize the impact of the pandemic throughout our region. We're aiming to develop short-term programs for business retention and longer-term efforts, efforts to mitigate the negative economic impacts of the coronavirus. We're focused on accelerating recovery by leveraging the region's tremendous assets and making our quality of place and our quality of life second to none and to be better prepared for future economic disruptions. Members of our organizations in the Restore Greater Newport Task Force include the Greater Newport Chamber of Commerce, Discover Newport, and Evan Smith is here with us, the Rhode Island Hospitality Association, Dale Venturini is also here, the Southeastern New England Defense Industry Alliance with Molly McGee, the Rhode Island Marine Trades Association, Wendy Mackey, and Polaris MEP, Christian Cowan. These are the main industry sectors impacting our local economy, and we all recognize the quality of life is our greatest asset for talent attraction and business retention. So it was clear to us at the outset that all of our respective industries must work together to ensure the common goal of economic recovery. Our first task was to cre create a recovery dashboard, collecting important data points that indicate the state of our economy. You can find this information on RestoreGreaterNewport.com. Some of our key findings at the onset of this pandemic indicated that we must act fast to reduce the long-term impacts of the virus on our economy. Some trends that we've uncovered are the following. Unemployment in the greater Newport region was at 7.5% in December of 2020, which impacted 5,158 workers compared to the 2019 rate of less than 3%. Jobs in the greater Newport region are highly concentrated in the accommodation and food and arts and entertainment and recreation sectors. These sectors, which have seen large impacts in the form of layoffs and closures due to restrictions, also have high levels of economically vulnerable workers. Those who work part-time, make less than $40,000 a year, and or are self-employed. Tourism is a key sector in the greater Newport region that faces major risk. Monthly occupancy rates in Newport area hotels are at least 20% lower than 2019 rates since the start of the pandemic. Monthly meal and beverage tax collections are down almost 24% in the greater Newport region from Q3 2019 to Q3 2020. The Pell Bridge traffic only reached between 73 and 80% of prior year's traffic since at least August. And our historic attractions attendance revenues are down as much as 80%. The next 90 days will be some of the most critical for Rhode Island's economy and the livelihood of business owners and residents. We must adopt an economic recovery plan that specifically addresses actions that will build revenue momentum. The task force recommends the following six action items. And for these items, I'm going to defer to some of my counterparts. Um, and first, I'd like to give Wendy Mackey an opportunity to talk about our first item to make permanent the Real Jobs Rhode Island program. Wendy? Great, thank Hi, thank you, Erin. Uh, so for the past eight years, Real Jobs Rhode Island has supported the development of industry partnerships uh, to allow for a direct response uh, to employers' needs, both in the moment, as well as building a training uh, pipeline for the anticipated needs in the future. Ensuring this program continues uh, and is funded appropriately will allow for these services to continue um, and we'll be able to leverage the previously the previous investments made um, in this program. Uh, for example, uh, over the past uh, and, and the program, I should say, uh, really does that response, that immediate response to both the public need as well as the employer need. And so, for example, 
over the last six months, uh, the Rhode Island Marine Trades Association has been working with Polaris MEP to uh, implement a program that would, uh, well, that has already placed 100 people in 100 open jobs in both the marine and uh, manufacturing spaces. Uh, and the minimum wage to do, uh, that each employee, um, each employee is making right now is at least $15. So really thinking progressively, uh, following, uh, following the need of the community and really relocating those out of uh, work folks and placing them in long-term year-round jobs. So we really are hoping, well, we really are asking for the continuance of the Real Jobs Rhode Island funding, at least at its current level, and really the permanence of that program to ensure that we will um, have these initiatives continue in the future. Thank you so much, Wendy. Yeah. Our next item is a one-year pause on new legislation and regulations that would add increased costs, administrative burdens, or operational complexities for the small business community, including the hospitality industry, that would in any other way negatively impact industries during this critical recovery phase. Said simply, it's not time for new costly mandates. Many small businesses, including restaurants, hotels, and venues, remain on the brink of closure and an additional regulatory burden could push them over the edge. A one-year pause will allow the hospitality industry to focus on surviving the pandemic and rebuilding their operations going forward. And it is, not, it is also not the time to stifle other industries that are helping to carry us through this economic downturn with additional um, taxes as well. The next two items I will turn over to uh, my colleague, Evan Smith from Discover Newport. Um, specifically developing and clearly communicating the reopening plan to tourism, hospitality, and retail on what will be required to host events, weddings, and conferences, and identify state funding to support marketing activities to attract regional tourists. Welcome, Evan. Thank you, Aaron, very much. And I want to uh, recognize you and the chamber for your vision and your leadership in pulling together this special task force. Um, I think that if it was not for your work as the chamber and your leadership, um, all of these key sectors would not have come together. So we're very grateful to you for, for bringing us all together and assembling us because we're stronger together and, and the chamber had that vision. So thank you. So over the last year, um, some companies did better during COVID, some companies did about the same, and some companies suffered. And in my professional opinion, the travel industry probably suffered greater than any other industry over the last 12 months. As we uh, come up on the first anniversary of the COVID uh, pandemic, and here we sit in Rhode Island on the verge of coming into another peak travel season, I think the task force has had discussions and uh, come to the realization that we will need the help of uh, state leadership to help us get clear guidance on how we are going to restart big markets like special events, like conferences and meetings, and like weddings. We need to have a predictable set of guidelines that these organizers can rely on so that they can convey these to their clients and uh, everyone feels like they're on safe ground so that we don't keep moving goalposts. Otherwise, we're gonna to continue to suffer from cancellations, which is a big problem for our industry right now. We've moved conferences, we've moved weddings, we've moved events uh, so many times that the frustration level is very high. And so we really need to work together with state leadership to get together the guidance that will, will help us remain competitive in the tri-state area, uh, but also give our clients assurances that their events will happen. So that's, that's one of the key things that the hospitality industry would like to see come forth moving forward. Uh, a second item is that we would like to see commerce uh, prioritize investments in promoting uh, not only Newport and Bristol County, but the statewide industry for uh, a recovery. Uh, we're going to need messaging out there to give consumer confidence that it's safe to travel again. 
And not only will regional offices like Discover Newport need to do that, but we need the state to also join us and support us in getting that critical message out that, that we take safe travel seriously and that we have put in place all the precautions necessary to ensure a positive customer experience. So our peak season here in Newport and Bristol and throughout Rhode Island is pretty much May through October. So we're just about two months away, uh, but now is the time that these two key steps have to be uh, implemented. And uh, we're looking forward to working with state leadership and with commerce to ensure that we can be very successful with both these endeavors. Thank you, Aaron, and I'll turn it back to you. Thank you so much, Evan. Our fifth item is to develop a coordinated effort to work with business associations, their company members, and municipal leaders to assess immediate economic and infrastructure needs to aggressively pursue federal stimulus funding. So we know that there's a real balancing act allowing region-wide groups such as ours to direct their own stimulus allocations while still participating in a statewide discussion on the appropriation of much needed funds. But we truly believe that our regional public-private partnership is best equipped to identify and implement the programs and projects that we need to accelerate recovery and deploy strategic development. Uh, our Connect Greater Newport initiative, which is our regional economic development division, has been working for several years in identifying the much needed um, support for our infrastructure and for capacity building within the region. We have the data, the information, and the wherewithal to implement these projects and programs. And we hope that the state will uh, work with us to enable us to not only pursue our own federal dollars, but also to direct some of these state dollars that come in from the federal stimulus. Our last item is to build on the success and lessons learned of the CARES Act of, that the Rhode Island Commerce Corporation programs um, that were implemented in 2020. And for that, I'd like to turn it over to my colleague Dale Venturini, the president of Rhode Island Hospitality Association, because she has been in, uh, incremental in implementing all of these programs, um, particularly for the hospitality industry. Welcome, Dale. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, everyone. Good morning. Um, one thing that I'm so excited about, living in the state of Rhode Island, we can get things done and we can get things done quickly. It was very um, easy to get us all together. And it, uh, just the conversations every Wednesday we're uplifting. I, you know, as bad as things were, we were sitting there working really hard and thinking outside the box and figuring out how we can all complement one another. And so I'm going to say what Evan said, uh, Aaron, to you is thank you for taking on this leadership role and thank you for including um, me and uh, the organization I represent here. So yes, we did. Uh, we were very, very lucky in the state of Rhode Island. Um, I'm very active in uh, the, in the country with my counterparts in. We were one of the first states to kick off some of this grant program. And even though sometimes it felt like it was taking forever, when I would compare it to what was going on in other states, we were, we were, we were somewhat ahead of the curve. So we had a lot of opportunity and a lot of things were happening so quickly. Um, kind of cliche to say there was no rule book on this and certainly not a rule book on, on grant money and get, you know we, what we did with blankets and heaters and many of you did with tents and heaters and the like. We didn't have, uh, the guidelines in writing. So we figured it out by all talking together. So what we wanna make sure is that next go round when uh, this new stimulus money comes in that we're at the table to figure it out and maybe streamline it a little bit and learn any lessons and talk about what we learned on the distribution, the funding mechanisms and the like. And just take what was a phenomenal program and make it even better. So I am so excited to be part of this initiative and um, I'm looking forward to where we go from here. And also being a statewide organization like some others, I am taking this messaging forward to other communities. Um, and so uh, talk about lessons learned, we're carrying this, this information out to talk to other communities so that they, they can do similar uh, programs like you've done here uh, and taking the leadership on in the greater Newport area. Thanks so much, Dale. Um, and so for all of these six different items, we've outlined our broad base recommendation, but we do plan on rolling out very specific suggestions and data points in the coming weeks relevant to each of these items. Again, 
Planning for the coming season must begin now so that our businesses, event planners, wedding hosts, travelers, and consumers can begin making plans to support the recovery of our economy. Recognize that we don't have all of the good ideas. We want the General Assembly and the governor's office to start to roll out and implement their excellent ideas and strategies for recovery and reopening our economy. Um, but we know that these are the first ones that we need to start addressing. Um, again, we'll roll out much more specific information data points uh, in the coming weeks. And we look forward to having conversations with our local and statewide legislators um, but we wanted to have this announcement today to recognize not only all of the work that um, my colleagues and, and our business community in the region have done, um, but also to get us start having these conversations. We can't wait anymore. The federal stimulus dollars are coming. The season is coming. We need to have a plan and our businesses need to be able to plan. So thank you all for coming today. Uh, we'd be happy to take any questions if you have any. Um, and again, we'll be providing the full press release upon the completion of this event. Are there any questions? All right, hearing none. <laughs> It looks like I will let you all go and carry on with your day. I look forward to individual conversations. Um, please reach out to myself or any of my colleagues from all of the organizations involved in Restore Greater Newport about this initiative, about our plans going forward and about our legislative agenda. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you and sharing more information with you in the very near future. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Terry. Hi, Dale. Hi, Rep. Hi, Wendy. <laughs> Hi, Patty. Hi. Nice to see you all. You too. Hey, Aaron. Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs>